the S curve, also known as the Sigmund curve, or the logistics curve, is a mathematical concept that represents the growth or progression of a variable over time. It is characterized by an initial slow growth phase. Things sort of go slowly. We don't really notice them too much. People, the naysayers say it can't be done, etc., etc. Then it's followed by a rapid acceleration. And finally, a saturation or leveling off phase. Now, on the S curve or the Sigmund curve, statistically, US EV sales have hit the point in which rapid expansion should occur within the next 12 to 24 months. The S curve is often used to describe the life cycle of various phenomena, including the growth of industries, product adoption, technological advancements, and even population dynamics. But it can be used to accurately show disruption happening within an industry. And right now, many experts believe the electric car industry is about to hit the rapid expansion phase on the S-curve. This is the pattern of growth where initially there is a slow uptake. So people don't pay so much attention. Then there's a period of rapid expansion and eventually a plateau as a phenomenon reaches its maximum potential. Now the S-curve is shaped like the letter S with the initial phase representing the early stages of growth. The middle phase showing exponential growth and the final phase indicating a more stable state or limited growth potential. The S-curve concept has been applied to the electric vehicle disruption happening right now in China, in Europe, in the US, in New Zealand, in Australia, many, many countries around the world because the initial adoption has been relatively slow. It's taken years to get to this point. However, there's due to factors such as what? High costs, the costs have come down massively limited infrastructure infrastructure is improving significantly and consumer hesitancy remember everyone used to call them electric golf carts there's nowhere to charge them they don't make sense the range is really bad the batteries would die within five years yeah all those things now have changed as ev technology has improved and awareness has increased there is a potential for a rapid acceleration in electric car adoption it's happening in the US right now. This will lead to significant market share gains for companies who make EVs. For those that don't, well, they'll just simply lose market share. Over time, as the market matures and approaches saturation, growth rates, of course, are going to stabilize. But we're not there yet. We're a long way away from that point. The first quarter of this year, electric car sales increased by nearly 70% in the United States. That is, well, Pretty amazing. Tesla's market share decreased. However, its sales were actually very, very good. One company whose market share decreased was Toyota's, probably at the expense of other companies selling more electric cars, which Toyota isn't really currently providing. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. This is a list of the best selling electric cars in America in the first quarter of this year. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. My name's Sam Evans and we do around probably six to nine videos per day with the goal being to try and let you know everything that's happening in the electric car industry, not just Tesla, but you know as many brands as possible and not just what's going on in the US, but what's going on worldwide in the entire global automotive market, China, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, the US, even Canada as well. Now, although EV sales in the US are still nowhere near what they are in California, I mean, 20% of all cars sold in California were electric in the first quarter of this year, market share has nearly doubled to 7% from 4% last year. That's a massive improvement. We're still waiting, aren't we, for all these EVs that General Motors are promising I think they're going to be coming soon. Ford, the same thing. But other car manufacturers now are getting in on it. Volkswagen are building EV production lines in the US, already producing EVs in the US. Other car companies are planning to do so as well. Because why? Well, because they have to. Because otherwise their cars don't qualify for incentives. According to the registration data from Experian, the total number of EV registrations during the first three months of 2023 was 257,000. 507. That's 63% more than a year ago and 7% of the total market up from 4.6% in Q1 of 2022. So it's not double, 
but it's a pretty good number. And I think this this time next year, I would say we will see a close to a similar figure as well in terms of the increase. Around about 12% of vehicles sold in the US next year will be electric. 12 to 14%. 12 to 14, let's go with that. Now, what do you think about that? Well, let me know your thoughts are in the comments. The total number of light duty vehicle registrations in the US amounted to 3.7 million or 3.69 million to be exact. That's an increase of 8.4% year over year. Of those, 7% were fully electric. Tesla sales increased by 37% year on year for a total of 155,360 deliveries. That's from the January to March period. That translates to 60% market share in the electric vehicle segment. Those are really good results. However, a year ago, Tesla did have market share of 72%. That could fluctuate, could change, who knows? I think Tesla are probably going to see an increase in the number of buyers wanting to buy the Model 3 when the new Highland version comes out. That could, that could lead to a little bit of a spike in sales. But also, the other thing is, possibly the reality here is the cheapest version of the Model Y with the 4680 cells. I don't believe Tesla is struggling at all for demand on that car. There's none for sale. I couldn't find any for sale on Tesla's website. There's no inventory in stock. Basically, there's a huge amount of demand for that vehicle. So the challenge here really is just for Tesla to increase production of that car, increase production of the base model 4680 all-wheel drive vehicle, the cheapest Model Y. That's probably the car that most people want to buy. So what does this mean? Well, non-Tesla electric vehicle registrations in the US were 102,147. That's an increase of 128% and 40% market share compared to over 28% in Q1 of 2022. EV registrations, 155,360 for the first year. Clearly you can see the market is evolving and changing, but there's not many cars now that qualify for the EV incentives of seven and a half thousand US dollars that aren't Tesla's. GM has a couple, um, you know, Ford have the base model for the F-150 Lightning, the cheapest version. Mustang Mach-E, you still only get half the credit, it's 3,750. Most of Tesla models get the full credit for seven and a half thousand dollars. So Tesla may be able to claw back a little bit of market share over the rest of this year. Which brands increase their sales? Well, Chevrolet, Ford, Volkswagen, Rivian, Mercedes-Benz, and even BMW, surprisingly. Who lost market share? Tesla, of course, Hyundai, Kia, Audi, Nissan, and Polestar. Now, when I say Tesla lost market share, I don't think for Tesla market just on here, it's growing their sales. They grew sales by 32%. That's a pretty good result when you're coming from a sizable number already, and you've only really got two models. The fact that they're about to reveal or about to produce the Cybertruck in significant numbers, hopefully by the end of the year. And then of course the Model 2, which they've just basically said they're already got in pre-production models, working models already, will mean that next year Tesla might be able to hold on to the market share they currently have. So the top EV brands besides Tesla, Chevrolet with the Bolt EV and the Bolt EUV, though that will be discontinued towards the end of the year, Ford with the Mach-E and the F-150 Lightning, and Volkswagen in particular with the ID.4, which is selling quite well. The ID.4, by the way, does qualify for the $7,500 EV incentives. So that's probably one of the key reasons why that sells, because it's also very, very affordable. You can see that the difference between the sales of Tesla's EVs and the other brands is still massive. Tesla EV sales, 155,360. General Motors with Chevrolet, 19,947. That's an increase of 7.7%. Ford, 13,362. That's an increase in sales versus the same quarter last year of 82%. Volkswagen in fourth with 10,053 deliveries. Hyundai in fifth with 8,064. Mercedes-Benz was next with 7,168. Followed by Rivian with 7,134 and BMW with 7,107. If you're wondering where Lucid is, they're in 14th place with 1,739 deliveries, so around about just under 600 per month, and a market share of 0.7%. What are the best selling models in the first three months of the year in America? Well, the top two are, of course, the Model Y and the Model 3. I'm sure you knew that already. So what are the others that are behind them? 
First of all, Model Y sales have increased by nearly 80%, by exactly 79%. So as you can see, clearly the Model 3 sales have gone down, meaning Project Highland can't come soon enough. That comes out, I think Model 3 sales are going to bounce back up. In third place was the Twins, the Bolt EV and the Bolt EUV. They made up the majority of GM's or Chevrolet's EV deliveries for the first quarter. Next was the ID4, 10,053. So Tesla sold almost exactly nine times as many Model Ys as Volkswagen sold ID4s. But really, the ID4, it's actually pretty good value for money. It costs around 40,000 US dollars in the base variant. If you apply the $7,500 tax credit, if you qualify for that, then you're looking at 32,000 US dollars. So that's pretty good value. Next, you've got the Tesla Model X with 6,545 sales. That's up 34% versus the last year. It's surprising to see the Model X actually outsold or outdelivered at least the Ford Mustang Mach E. The Mach E had only 6,110 deliveries. It's the only vehicle in the top six cars here that actually had less sales in this quarter versus the previous quarter of 2022. So Mackie sells 6,110 down by, unfortunately, a pretty significant number, down 12%. Also down, Hyundai Ioniq 5, 5,839 deliveries. F-150 Lightning increased by 53%, 5,652 deliveries, followed by the BMW i4 with 4,547 deliveries. And if we look for the Tesla Model S, Model S sales were significantly lower than those of the Model X. Model S sold... 2,636, which is down 71% versus the same quarter last year. Clearly, the Model X is much more popular than the Model S. That's what I've been saying all along. Rivian, why don't you make a high-priced SUV? That's what people are after, I think, in this high price segment. If they're going to spend more money on a car, they generally seem to want to buy an SUV versus a sedan. So I think that's what Rivian, if they did that, where they could get some serious sales. So as you can see, the Model X is selling quite a bit better than the Model S. And I believe that's down to the fact that, that it is an SUV body shape. SUVs generally are better sellers in the higher price segments. So I think that if Lucid wants to stay alive, they need to bring out an SUV and quickly. Otherwise, give them a few years and they might not, well, they might not exist anymore. They could go bankrupt because they're bleeding billions of dollars. Now, one of the most shocking ones on this list, and it might not sound shocking to you, but it does to me, that's the Nissan Leaf. Nissan delivered 2,476 Leafs over the first three months of the year. What's that? Nothing, really. 800 per month. The Nissan Leaf was once the best-selling EV in the world. In fact, it was once the best-selling EV in America. Now, it's not even the top 20. Nissan just kind of left it left it to die. And sadly, that's what's happening to the Leaf. But fortunately, EV sales in America are blowing up. I mean, you're looking at nearly a 70% increase over last year. And I believe this is the, just the start of a continued trend of massive growth in this segment. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.